Howdy folks, Dave of Chaos Crafting here. Uh, so today I want to build a castle gate from foam, like this one. I did this one last week and uh, I really enjoyed doing it. Unfortunately it doesn't have a space for a door. You know, how else can I capture the murder hobos, trap them in the city, if I don't have a door to do it? So, in this episode, I'm going to go ahead and create a castle wall, very similar to this. But it's going to have an area where we can actually put a door in. Now, I'm thinking that the door will be an episode unto itself, because I don't think you want to watch two hours worth of design and foam carving. If you do, let me know, because hey, uh, I'm, I'm all about it. I am all about the foam carving. So this is going to be like my template. Uh, next, I'm going to create a, uh, a design. And, ta-da! A plan. So basically, I'm going to use this plan to uh, cut out some foam. Just a quick sketch. Uh, showing me the height and width that I plan to uh, work with. Also uh, getting into the additional dimensions uh, from a top-down view, uh, needing some smaller areas. And you see here, we have a space to put an actual door in. Uh, and we'll get right to it. No! Hey! Hey, hey, hey! We're all friends here! Put, put put the rocks down. It's it's okay. It's okay. The proxon is just a tool. You don't need it for most applications with foam. In, in this instance, a good old sharp knife and a straight edge will take care of everything. I promise. It's okay. The proxon just makes it easier. Yes, yes, I know. It's like a million dollars. But eventually... You get a birthday, you get Christmas. If, if you really want to get into foam, you want a Proxon. It makes life so simple. I'll, I'll show you. But again, for, for this instance, a good old sharp knife, steady hand, you'll be fine. I promise, I promise. Let's go.
Okay, now it's time to start blocking out our bricks. Now the style I choose is a half inch tall by one inch long brick. You can choose any design you like. Mine is a little simplified. It doesn't get as complex as a flagstone pattern. But there's reasons. As you're blocking out the bricks, you're defining what you're going to cut. The more bricks, the longer it's going to take to cut. I have lots of things to do, so I don't really want to get into the really complex flagstoning. Though I've seen some beautiful work done by, by folks who do take that uh, level of detail to its extreme. You just need to make your own choice. But for me, it's going to be the one inch by half inch, and we'll uh, do that right now. One of the things you need to be aware of when you're drawing your bricks are your corners. What you want to do is you want to wrap your design around. Okay, we've got the bricks done. As you can see, the sides, the inside, I'm keeping these grouped together specifically so the lines all match up. When you're, it's it's just a little detail. I mean, you would probably be the only one that noticed if they didn't line up. So now it's time to actually do the carving. This is where I get a really sharp hobby knife. Brand new blade. And I start to go along the lines I just drew out. What I'm going to do is take just the tip of the blade and I'm going to hold it right at about a 60 degree angle and I'm going to create a cut along the line I drew. I'm going to draw that all the way along this line. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Just try to follow your guidelines as best as possible. Now I'm flipping it over and I'm going to do the same style cut on the other side. This is going to create a V groove where the two bricks come together. Let's see, yeah, okay. I'm not going deep. This is this you're not trying to cut through the foam. Alright, see this is this is what we came up with. That is your line that you just cut out of there. And you just created a seam between these two lines of bricks. Okay, this is where the fun really begins. This is where I would put on some music, just kind of zone out, 
and I would start carving out all of these lines just just like I did this first one and again I'll speed this up give you a little demonstration and then we'll get to assembly sound fun sounds fun Okay, and carving is done. As you can see, all this has been carved. I have a small pile of debris over here. I carved the inside. Now, before we get to assembly, we need to think about texture. Texture can be achieved with something as simple as a balled up piece of tin foil that you roll onto the XPS foam to give the bricks a more worn look or a natural stone appearance. This is where we actually get into more of the art of foam carving and texturing. It depends on what type of a, a structure you want to create. If you want something built by orcs, you're going to really go to town. The mortar seams are going to be huge. There's going to be broken stones. If this is a elven castle, you may not want to texture it much, much at all because the stones would be polished smooth. So you really got to make up your mind. Decide what you're going to create. What style are you looking for? For me, I'm thinking more of a, a human castle with you know standard medievalish stones so now I I've decided I will roll with the aluminum foil and I'm giving it a texture that removes that smooth natural foam finish okay, here's something you should be aware of you want to do all your cutting before you start texturing. As you put pressure on the foam, you're compressing the foam. And if you try to cut compressed foam, it'll most likely tear and not cut. So do all your cutting first before you get to the texturing. So I'm going to go ahead and texture all this out, and uh, then then we'll then we'll put it together. All right, and the texturing is done. All right, so as you can see, the foam is bumpy. Conceivably, once painted, it will look like real stone, and that's what we're going for. So now I'm going to put this sub-assembly together. And we have a choice. We could use something like tacky glue, which has a lengthy dry time, but uh, a forgiveness as you assemble. Since it doesn't instantly dry, you can push your two pieces around to get the perfect alignment. Or we could use the good old hot glue gun. Hot glue gun is the advantage of a uh, really good bond, uh, super fast uh, dry time. Its disadvantages is that it uses heat and that heat, if you go with the high setting on your hot glue gun, has the possibility to melt the foam 
which you really don't want. I mean, that would be bad. And you also get those little wispies. You have to be careful with the wisps of the glue itself. So what I'm going to do is it's all warmed up. I've got it set on low. And I'm going to put just the barest seam on the foam itself. Now, the other thing with hot glue, see I'm swirling to get rid of the wisp. The hot glue has its own thickness to it. So you have to be very careful not to put too much hot glue or you'll create a sixteenth of an inch or more bead. Now see I'm trying to get that to squeeze together perfectly so it's just right. Just right. Okay. And do the same thing here and you see I'm keeping my pieces organized so that again the lines of the bricks do line up swirl 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 all right and if anything I want to push any excess hot glue towards the center of the structure where it won't be seen. I don't want that hot glue to squeeze out. You're going to get a little bit, but you don't want it to squeeze out too much. If it does squeeze out, you could try to move a little bit with your fingernail. But remember, this glue's hot. I've, I've touched hot glue and it, it's not fun. See? It's, it's, it's already pretty much set. Downside, if you put it on wrong, you're foobar. Alright, so. Again, let's see this time. Uh, nice bead. Nice little bead. that to squish up right on there. See, that's, the, that's a wisp. You just got to make sure you clean those up. That's not going to be perfect. Nothing in crafting is perfect. Getting close is totally acceptable. Remember, we're still going to do finishing with paint. We can uh, cover up a lot of sins at that stage. All right, I think you got the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and put on this last piece and then do the rest off off camera. Wisp. Ugh. And we'll move on to the next bit of this project. I hope you guys are really enjoying this. I'm enjoying the the content creation myself. This is new for me, totally new. Well outside of my comfort zone. All right. All right, going to go off camera. I'm going to finish this up, and we'll talk about the next step. Okay, it's together, all assembled. At least this sub-assembly is done. And I, I, I'm looking at the clock, and I'm seeing I'm, I'm at 20 minutes already. It's making this a long video, probably more than you want to watch all in one go. So what I'm going to do is, like I said at the beginning, I'm going to break this into two parts. In this second part, we will put the top and the base on the castle wall. We'll do the design, the additional brickwork 
to give it a little bit of greater three dimension. And we'll do the, the hinged doors on the inside. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed what I've showed you so far. You know, if, if you like it, you know, click that like button. Let me know. If you want to subscribe, please do. You'll get to see uh, when this next video comes out. And since this weekend is a long weekend, it may be tomorrow or the next day. But yeah, this is Dave, Chaos Crafting. Uh, I hope you like what you've seen. And uh, I'll be making more stuff. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye.